So, so Anne, you're in Dartford. For those of us who don't necessarily know much about Dartford, other than it's on the side of the bridge in Kent on the M25 after you've left Essex or when you're about to leave Kent and go into Essex, what is there you, you'd like to tell us about Dartford that makes it stand out? Or Well, Dartford um, has an inherent mobility. So the people come in and out. Is it, you know, not it's not a trans, as transient as maybe some of the coastal regions might be, but but we do have people move in and move out uh, a fair amount. So, for example, we to, uh, on the end of January, I had exactly the same number of kids on my roll as I did in at the end of September, but I've had twenty four leave and 24 arrive, all different year groups, all different reasons, but that's the sort of mobility. Um, we're also in a selective area. So we have secondary schools, I'd like to call them comprehensive, but they're not fully comprehensive because the most able are taken by the grammars. Um, there are, I think there's 10 secondary schools in Dartford. I think there might be 11 now because we've had one just recently open. Uh, four of them are grammars, single sex grammars. My school, Dartford Science and Technology College, is the only single sex, non-selective school. Try saying that when you've had a Pino. Um, and it's, it's full of absolutely wonderful young ladies who we try and help become the person they're meant to be, basically. I don't know if that helps. It does, yeah. And, and, and so, I mean, it's an urban place, essentially, Dartford, isn't yeah. it? Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, lots of greenery around it, but given the fact of where it's located and that there's two very busy roads one motorway and, 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 and another one. It's it's a polluted place too, right? So Absolutely. And that's something that we you'll come to, I'm sure, at the end of our chat about what, we, what we're going to try and do to sort of help address the balance of climate. And and you, are you a, are you a, a Dartford local? Have you always worked in that area? Tell us about you. You know what? I, I'm a local-ish girl. I was born and brought up in Welling, okay? Oh. But I actually lived in the, the, one of the houses opposite but a long time ago so it's quite amusing to me that um, I used to live in the in the road that um, I'm now head of the school but that sort of family thing maybe it's always been with me because I went back to teach at the school I was a student at so when I was doing my PGCE I got a phone call from the head saying look we're looking for a maths teacher what do you think in those days when you could do that because obviously I'm a lot older than I look and um, so I went back and and uh, managed to get a lovely job as a maths teacher in my old school and my sister was just leaving year 11 so I pitched up in the July because obviously we finished and she was leaving in the July and uh, that was interesting some stories about that but so you didn't you didn't uh, cover her classes at all, did you? Just... No, I didn't. Okay. But I did get some wry looks from some of her mates as as they'd walk past me in the uh, in the playground. But that was all right because after a month they all left, so that's fine. Okay. Yeah. And, and so so was your ambition always to go into teaching? Well, this is a really good question because the answer is I was born to be a teacher, and you've only got to ask all of my teddies. All of my siblings, all of my friends, anybody at some point has been made to sit down with a pen and paper in front of me, and I still do it. <laughs> so I, I mean, honestly, I wanted to be a teacher since I, I, I there was there were the only I went through a stage where I thought I might be a marine biologist because I was watching a lot of Jack Cousteau programs. That's how old I am, um, and um, I, that was a little phase. But I was so much better at maths than anything else, so uh, I became a maths teacher. But no, seriously, I always wanted to be one. Yeah. And so when you, you so you obviously worked at the, your, your school that you went back to and then how did you end up being right. a head teacher? At so I went there for a year uh, and then I got what used to be called, I can't even remember, they used to give them um, my first TLR equivalent yeah. um, in a grammar school for girls in Bexley. And I took there for three years and then I went and taught in Dubai and I worked for the Sheikh. Okay. So I... Right. He, he had a little school for his kids, of which there were numerous ones, and also for the staff children. And I taught there, and I remember going into a classroom on my first day, and there were like seven girls. Um, and I'm like, well, where's the rest of the class? And I was saying, oh, no, this is the class. This is a big class, <laughs> seven of them. <laughs> so I lived in Dubai for three years, um, and that was really lovely. And then I came back because I was, I, I realised that, you know, for my progression, I needed to come back. I came back and got a job as head of maths in a school in uh, Longfield, which isn't far down the road. 
um, from where I am now. And then I worked my way up through the ranks, you know, of senior teacher in those days and deputy head, and eventually became co-principal of the school when it became an academy um, and was co-principal of Longfield Academy uh, for seven years. And then I came to Dartford Science and Technology College when I decided I didn't want to be part of the trust anymore. Right. And I've been here, this is my sixth year. Okay, so so how was the school when you first arrived? Tell us a bit about what it was like, because it was already a cooperative. It was, a, it was a cooperative school. It was a quiet cooperative, I suppose we'd say, yeah? I would say it was a quiet cooperative. I think it had a bit of a splash when it first became a cooperative. There was videos that I saw on the website that were from the staff at the time and the students at the time about what does cooperative uh, values mean to you. And that was that was nice. And around the school, and in fact, we've only got three of them, you know, there's, there's six, isn't there? But we've got um, some mosaics of solidarity and self-respect and stuff, but we haven't got them all. No one's ever got around to finishing them, but that was something they did at the time. Uh, but the head did that in 2014 as a way of avoid, and, and I would seriously know that this was a way of avoiding because becoming part of an academy and being sucked up in the academy movement at that time that was felt wasn't necessarily for this school and I still agree with that to be fair but it wasn't my decision and then he left um, and there was an interim head mm -hmm. and then I came so it's been it's been really interesting the school's never been a bad school um, it's a good school and it remains good and I think I've helped make it gooder <laughs> that's a word <laughs> um but it's but it's just I just love it here I just love it here the kids are lovely the staff are lovely but but we but we do we work as we work in this together you know someone I don't know if it was said something about we're all in this together and yeah absolutely what what I feel is some is, a, is our culture mm -hmm. the kids the staff everyone the parents yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, def it's definitely a warm school. Uh, yeah, this is, it feels lovely. Um, I enjoy it anyway. Yeah, so and your, that's your, what matters. your support staff see that. Everyone, um, there's there's respect without um, deference, I'd say, at your school. You know, everyone yeah. treats each other with respect, but there isn't any visible hierarchy that's Im imposed on anyone. I, I think we've been able to evolve to that position. Okay, tell me, because tell me sometimes about you need to direct people. Tell me sometimes about that. you need to Yeah. So when I first came here, there were certain processes that needed to be put in place. And um there were certain things. I'm not I'm not very tolerant of people who misbehave, you know, repeatedly, because I don't see why we should have to put up with it. So there were quite a few exclusions and detentions right. and that, but we don't have as many now because that cohort's gone and the new co I mean more or less everybody who's here I've I've seen through haven't I you know my my year seven when I first came in and now in the sixth form so they know what to expect and, and we've got we've got to the point where it's nice and calm right so that's that's about culture shift you're describing yeah so there was a degree of um uh antagonism some kids who were who were there and, and it sounds small scale from what you're describing it is it, it was never a bad school mm. and behavior you know and let me tell you now there might be a kid roaming the corridors getting into trouble that might be happening there might be an incident in the park you know later this week or last week or whatever and one of our kids is involved kids are kids are kids kids you know they we can't stop them but what we try and do and our mantra is to educate and empower now you know I know everyone's visions and and, uh, and strap lines mean something, but that, uh, you know, that is what we're doing. We're educating and empowering our girls to be the women that they should be, the successful women that they yeah, should so, be. So that's, that, to me, that's really interesting, that word empowerment. And obviously yesterday, you, I don't know that you heard it, but Jonathan Rowe, um, who's the CEO of Thrive in, in Hull, was, was talking about pupil agency and a, a big piece of work they've done across their trust since the Me Too movement has been about sexual harassment. So they've got two secondary schools. One is a large, I think it's 1,600 mixed secondary and one is a girls secondary school. And they've been working on a whole set of things around sexual harassment and boys' behavior towards girls and adjusting boys' behaviour. And you use that word empowerment. And for me, that's an interesting word in that context. So is there anything you want to say further about what you mean by empowerment? I, yeah, I think what we want them to do is not just accept the norm. 
you know so when we talk about we do we do film and media in, in the school and when we talk about that you know so the stereotypic um views that you get of women on screen or whatever you know just because it's like doesn't we want people to go well that's not right or that's not normal or that should it be like that we want the girls to be to feel they have enough confidence self-confidence and um understanding that they can they can query and question things and make their own choices and make their own mind up that's right. what we want yeah so that they've that it, jonathan was talking about something he describes as constructive dissent that they can say it gives them the ability to say no that's not right he sounds like he's much cleverer with words than I am. <laughs> <laughs> he's just read. He's just read a couple of books. And oh, okay, that's fine then. Specific things, so I won't worry too much about that. Um, so let's. So for you then, you said you said the school was good and it's got gooder since you've been there. I'll go with that, even though my background's an English teacher and it, it makes me a little uncomfortable, but I'll go with it nonetheless. Um, what's what's got better since you've been at the school? Okay, what have been so your obvious successes? My obvious successes is that. I don't have to put any members of staff on supportive, you know, teaching and learning pathways to help them improve. Even our um, trainees are, are good, generally good, once we've moulded them and told them what our core principles might be in teaching, etc. So the standard of teaching has improved, outcomes have improved. Um, I'd love to think it's because of me, but it might be in spite of me, you never know. Um, the culture has become warmer um, and more collegiate and more community based. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that's I think that's probably sums up uh, lots of different things have happened. <laughs> this is the last point. The culture has become more collegiate because we're heading into this, the, the C word cooperative to some extent mm. here. More collegiate, more community based. Has that led to that? improvement in teaching and learning or is it something else you've done in teaching and learning that's led to that um that's a good question you didn't you didn't tell me you were going to ask me that one well, I, I said if you that. said something interesting that i might just pursue it and here we are i am <laughs> um so i don't know the bottom line is i who knows you know what came first chicken or the egg you don't know but i do think the fact that it's okay to make a mistake we, we say this to the kids don't we don't worry you've made a mistake do it again so we should be saying it to all of our staff as well shouldn't we mm -hmm. yeah you made a mistake that's fine go away and do it again or you know what do you need what do you need what do you need to do that job properly and maybe people feel safer to experiment and feel safer um to to say, do you know what, I, I can't do this, or I need a bit of time here, or I need a bit of help here. Um, but ultimately, we're working for, you know, self-responsibility, um, aren't we? And and I think the solidarity is also another word that I think, we are all in this together, I'll say this, you know, it's us against the world, you know, we are, you know, it's here and no more, you're inside the circle, we're staying inside the circle, and it's us against the world. And it, and it works. <laughs> Yeah, so you're you're starting to talk about the cooperative stuff. So yeah, let, let's talk about how how the cooperative identity of Dartford Science Technology College has emerged over the past few years. What's been happening? How's that how's that been changing as time? Right, well, I would say over in the first few years that I was here, it was very difficult to um do anything because I was getting established as a head teacher in a new school. We had the off I'd arrived in September, we had the offstead in the March. Um, I didn't have a business manager. So the first year or two was, you know, just generally trying to be operational and moving to strategic and, and making your own teams and, you know, getting the teaching and learning sorted. So whilst I was aware of the Cooperative Trust and I had a couple of conversations with John, who I think is online, and um, I had an understanding to some degree of what the Cooperative Trust sort of umbrella was. I didn't really understand how it affected us. And so if I'm honest, I sort of put it in a box and put it on the, I'll open it when I've got a bit of time pile. And then of course we had COVID, so the past two years. And then I got to September and thought, you know what, this is, I can't, I can't leave this box on this table much longer. I've got to open it. Um, and fortunately I was able to work with you, Lee, and, and that helped allay a lot of my fears uh, and made it easier to try and meet the articles of association that we all have to have as part of the cooperative trust um, alliance or whatever you want to call yourself so yeah that's so we've so really if i'm honest it's been lip service for a little while um and now it is uncovering what we need to do and trying to put in place things to meet them without 
doing extra work. So, for example, um, the forums. You know, we haven't had a forum. We ask parents what they think. We ask students what they think. But we've never really branded it as a forum. So all we're going to do is change some of the ways in which we engage with our stakeholders under the term, you know, this, you know, as part of our cooperative forum, we'd like to know your ideas and thoughts on this particular thing. Um, and because of the virtual nature of a lot of our, our work now, we will do a lot of that virtually. So it won't be a case of, you know, inviting people in and having three men and a dog in a, in a room, you know, um, it's, it hopefully will get more engagement and we'll get more out of it. And we'll also make sure that we ask the staff and the students the same questions so that we get a rounded view. We yeah. do that anyway. We just never we just never named it that. Yeah, I guess I guess the one step up in terms of the cooperative model is 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 those constituencies, those those groups of people taking action so that they have in control of that action. And it's that's the next step onwards, I suppose, in that in that shifting from finding out their views and engaging them through finding out their views and moving on to them being activists in the school community and how that works. But you probably already have that in place for your your student body to some extent, right? Yeah, I think we've, we've definitely got some of that, but it is about formalising it a little bit, um, especially probably the parent voice. I, um, because I think it's got confused over time with the PTA and of course it's a completely different mm -hmm. a different voice it's it's for different reasons so I think that's that's our next you know evolution and and your trust so who's on your trust board who are your partners how does that look in terms of the people you've got when I first joined we had STEMnet um we had um someone from Kent we had the Dar uh, Darren Valley Hospital with someone from there and from Grinch University uh, within my first year the chair <laughs> the chair went and one of the others went I think we had the University of Grinch and the University of Canterbury so we lost the University of Canterbury and we lost Darren Valley Hospital so we've been operating on a really tiny trust board I think four people so um, that's uh, AJ Sharman who is the regional lead in, in the southeast for STEM um, we've got a a uh, member of the Greenwich University. We have uh, the chair of governors of the school, uh, which has changed over time as well. And, oh, crikey, somebody else. Me, four, is that four? Yeah, four of us. So it's been four of us for two years. So that was another reason for talking to you about like, what, what do I do about getting trustees? Um, so I've managed to find someone from the Cooperative Trust to join us, haven't I, Lee? Yep. So you've been strong armed into joining us and um, I've managed to move my KCC person into my for uh, into someone from the forum to be a trustee because they're a local, they are a, a, a stakeholder and they're an ex head teacher of, an, of a different school. So um, they've got a lot of knowledge of the local area. Um, I've got a member of my staff who's just become a trustee because they do a lot of the community work. So obviously with that link being with what the trustees feel the direction of the school one of their one of their directives really is to be a community school that is that's how we feel so uh we just need one more person and we're full which yeah. will be amazing yeah and and obviously you've got a couple of areas of focus and we'll shift onto those and I don't know whether you're going to want to share your screen at some point but but there's obviously the big old strand around STEM your Dartford Science Technology College for a reason it's yeah. part around partly around the empowerment of the girls in your school but also that stereotype breaking that your some of your work is around too Anne um, that's one thread I suppose of the trust's work in terms of quality of education obviously you've been doing a, a stack of work around well-being haven't you over the past few yes. years particularly since the pandemic as well and then uh, then you've got your other thread around building connections with the community where the eco classroom and the forest school sit. I don't know how you want to unpack or explore all of those. So I've opened them all up at once. You have all opened them all up at once. I'll talk about the wellbeing. I'm not going to share my screen because I think people, especially if they've seen several presentations, have probably had enough of other people's screens. Um, but I was asked to talk about wellbeing because we did have a chapter of a book dedicated to the to the school, it, it, the book's called Cultures of Staff Wellbeing and Mental Health in School, which which we can easily um, give people the reference to if they're interested. Um, and we're just a case study in that, along with a lot of others. But the reason that we got asked to do that, I think, was because we do incredibly well with staff morale um, in our 
surveys and also in the, it's known if you I don't know why it just is known that when you come here you know as a teacher you're treated well you can go at three I don't if people want to go at three because they've got other things to do I don't care as long as you get the work done and if we need you for a meeting you stay go at three that's when the kids go go but it's not a problem um so we have that sort of flexibility I've got 17 part-time staff which is a nightmare to timetable but actually they're really good practitioners and I don't want to go well no you've got to do full time or go well, what's the point in that I'll have I'd rather have four or three great days of them and have the headache of a timetable so we we do work we bend over backwards to help people live because we're all human we all have bereavements we all have issues I've, someone today just come to see me in tears their dog's just about to die just go go it's not a pro it really isn't a problem I, I'm not fussed because I know that will come back in spades at some other point um so and, we have that so what you're saying there is that human quality so I've worked yeah. in a school where everyone wanted to get there there was almost a competition that to be there as early as possible and stay as late as possible you know that terribly competitive culture about quantity of time rather than quality of delivery or the quality of experience we know that that is a disaster really for morale but it also doesn't have any impact yeah. what you're saying is the way you're the way people are treated in the in the broad school community means that we don't just have impact on well-being we have an impact on the quality of teaching and all these other things as well because we get the right people staying yeah that's true and i'm i'm a nightmare because i i hate the mornings so i'm never here really early unless something's happened but i'm a lot I, I can stay here we, we have a school that's open till 10 o'clock every night because we have a lot of lettings so you know i am here late some nights but i have to make myself go to show people or model that it's fine to go at three or three thirty. you haven't got to stay and i you know it made me laugh this morning uh when it, i think it was james who said you know you work 18 hours a day i work 18 and a half and i've been there as well you know i work hard than you no, it's just it's it's treat people how you want to be treated that's that's been my mantra for um how i lead really so we have a, you know we've got an open door but i'm sure this is what many people do i don't suppose we're unique um we do invest in people we've got trained mental health first aiders something i did which i think if if people don't do might be worth considering is we have not only do we have school counsellors for the students but um, I bought into a service for staff and it's we pay obviously but staff get six free counselling sessions completely confidential so we don't know who we don't know how many we don't know what about um, and I've also said if people need to take time off in the school day to go to them if they wanted to say you know if they wanted to then let me know they were having it you know that's fine I haven't got to know why I would give them time off nobody's asked for time off but they could if they wanted to or if I felt they needed to because of their circumstances that they you know they they just needed to take that to go you know just go because you need to so we've done things like that uh, during the pandemic we rang everybody every month SLT had a little group of people we all rang up found out how they were virtual tea parties just to check in on people not long because we've all got other things to do we've all you know we're not doing this instead of teaching or or planning great lessons or or doing the right thing, we're doing this alongside to just support people and make sure that they feel uh, wanted. And one of my team had a great, uh, a great idea. And being a bit of a shopaholic, I really bought into it. And she said, while everyone's off, why don't we send them all something? So I'm like, okay, like what? You know, a bunch of flowers? What do you mean? No, 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 just a, a little, you know, like a care package. You know, this was before all the masks that you could get. We probably could have got some masks sent to them and that. So we sent them all a Freddo. I know it's not much, right? A Freddo. We sent them some pens with a cut, you know, that masterful colouring or thoughtfulness, mindfulness colouring. Um, we sent them all a little, a wooden, one of the DT teachers made some little wooden hearts and put thinking of you, DSTC or whatever. Oh, it sounds a little bit like someone's died, but, you know, we're all in this together. And I had so many staff say how lovely it was to get, you know, because some of our staff live on their own, didn't talk to anyone from one week to the next, just waited for somebody to call them. So, so to get a letter or something like that was great. Um, so we, we do what we can. We've got a wellbeing team. So we have uh, next week, we've got pizza and Prosecco after school. So we, we get a glass of Prosecco and we make pizza, cost us a fiver, it's good fun. So, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's, I mean, what you're talking about is, is like the stuff you do, but you're describing something about the 
the culture you live in really aren't you because you're saying i have to model it because sometimes i want to stay late but i need to i need to set the example yeah hence why i don't go to any of the staff parties because i think they need to let off steam yeah, yeah. where i can i will do uh, will do these things and i'm sure lots of people do all do these things anyway so i'm not i'm sure i'm not alone but um well being we have been nominated for you know awards and stuff for that um and we, as i say we're in the book so well being has been something that i think we are good at funnily enough we're doing the survey at three o'clock today this year's right. survey so it'll right. be very interesting to see if it's got better yeah. or worse but i'll only tell you i guess i guess one of the points james was making this morning about the well-being thing it's about you have to show your vulnerability to sh to be authentic yeah. around well-being otherwise it's you're just talking the talk yeah yeah i think you're right and then going on to the community section one of the things we've we've done i don't know if anyone else in in the area does it but i've not heard of it we close our school for a day I mean, we don't physically close it. We're open for, for those that need to come in. But basically all my staff, absolutely everyone bar one person on the desk, goes out and works with a group of students in the community. So we might be painting, you know, a scout hut. We might be going to an old people's home and reading stories or playing bingo. Or we might be gardening uh, for an old lady. Or we might be... Uh, we've been to a church and sorted out their uh, cupboards and that we've, uh, that was quite fun untangling all their lights and you know just just help, just paying back just <laughs> literally paying back one thing we did once as well because we get sponsored to do this because over time we've learned that you can get people people will give you money to do this sort of thing and in fact some companies send their staff along to help do it because it's part of their you know um, yeah, so it's almost like a diy sos sort of setup well, <laughs> <laughs> All right then, but I don't think so. But we just got. But we we made um, or we we got some uh, sponsorship. We made these. Um, you know, what you put in a shopping trolley. So tr shopping trolley little key rings with DSTC or whatever. We tried giving them away, but people were so. Um, skeptical you know why are you giving me something we're just trying to you know it was a, it was called a random act of kindness right so that was quite amusing um trying to give things away at people who didn't want to take in the end but we did eventually give them all away so uh, yeah we just and it i didn't i didn't this is nothing to do with me this was already it had happened the first year for the first time the year i arrived it had happened in that july and i arrived in the september so um wasn't my idea but I've, uh, but i think it's an amazing idea it's really yeah. and how, what, what do the girls say about that experience for them well most of them there's going to be one or two don't want to do anything do they um one or two of them asked to go back to the same ones year on year so what, one of the things we do is we we work with the arrow riding um group which is, is for disabled um people who they have a, a lovely riding experience we've got a couple of girls that love going there and want to go back some of our girls have then joined as a volunteer to some of these places um, others will go there and that'll be the only thing they've done but sometimes it takes them to places they've never been before so for example Dartford's got a beach I mean who knew um, and yeah it's a little beach I've never been but there is a little beach and one of the things we did was tidy up the beach and some kids were going there some of the kids who live in Dartford I don't live in Dartford right. that's my excuse you know who knew there was a beach there they were tidying up the beach so um yeah, it's, it, it's a really lovely day. We we actually had the Lord Lieutenant of Kent come one year to have a little look round um, to see what we were doing. We were hoping for a royal visit, but of course, things have all changed with COVID and, and less royals to actually, you know, come well, and see. Good to have that um, Lord Lieutenant or Lieutenant of, of Kent as a contact, though. I mean, lots of, lots of people don't know about these. Um, yeah, and you've just corrected me because... One of them is a, an American flight person and the other one is actually the Lord, whatever. Lieutenant. Which one is it? Lieutenant. Lieutenant. Mm. Okay. So, yeah. Well, yeah so, so they, and they often have funding streams as well, that the, these um, dignitaries, don't they, for, yes. for all sorts of stuff. Yeah, they, they do. And as I say, people have been incredibly generous. We, we, the sponsorship money pays for things like the paint if we're painting somewhere, or they might paint. Uh, they might pay for the um, soil to go on um, some beds in someone's house or in a you know a shared allotment area or something, um, and the tools to go with it and paint rollers and I mean you know. It does look a bit like a bring and buy sale here that morning where there's all tables with things on and then everyone takes their stuff and goes off. But it is lovely. Uh, and I would say to anyone in the collective um, 
family if anyone wanted to to find out more about it to get in touch is i've got a guy that that organizes it and he's just mustard okay that's, that's great so that's like one aspect of the community what about yeah, and then the next one we're trying to do is the food forest so we were working with um healthy living kent which is a charity to try and help people grow vegetables or eat better um etc and we had a little piece of ground that we then used um, for, as an allotment. And this was before COVID. And we had some, some uh, vulnerable adults who came on site, supervised to do some allotment work on, on site in a little area that we'd never used anyway in the corner of the backfield. So it, it suited them, it suited us. And then there was conversations about, well, how could we make this uh, a bigger thing? So there was some lottery money that was bid for, not by me, but by Healthy Living, and they got a therapeutic horticulturalist, another word you need to be careful about when you're drinking, all right, so a therapeutic horticulturalist, and he's been working for a couple of years, and he came up with a design for a food forest, so lots of different things, I'm just going to look at my... He's got some suggestions, but it's a, it's a section, it's bigger than the original section of land that we we had given over. It's much bigger than that. And they were talking about a food forest that the community could have access to, which would mean building a new community entrance and, you know, all sorts of work. But I, and I just said, well, if we're going to do that, can't we have a community eco centre? So, uh, yeah, that's all part of the um, plan. And just before Christmas, we went out to do some crowdfunding to see if we could get this off the ground. So all, all we had at the time was a aerial picture of what it looks like now and a mock-up of what it could look like and uh, we had to try and raise five thousand pounds we raised six thousand pounds we got some matched funding from Aviva who I need to give a shout out to um, and then they gave us an extra 10 because they really liked the project so we've got 15 16 thousand pounds sitting in a bank that we now need to do something with um, we've got to do some work on making sure that the ground is of the right uh, consistency to be able to put these um, structures and plants etc in and that's our and, and from March onwards that's when we're going to start doing it so so we're hoping to have a, a food forest and an eco centre and the eco centre will be built with bales of hay yeah so it looks like a great building in, yeah. in terms of how it's going to so work it's, it, well hopefully fingers crossed it all comes to fruition yeah. Um, and that will help us with our science and our food technology. And, you know, we're hoping for some seed to plate work there as well. Um, and, you know, making sure we design it so it's equitable so people can of all different abilities and, and you know, times can come and use it. We've got a small SEN department as well. And we think that getting those girls involved in helping with that and growing vegetables and, and and tending and so on will be really good for them as well as somewhere to go if you just want to be quiet or you just want to see something different and be inspired or hmm. so. yeah and, and I guess you know we we heard primary primary school trust talking about this this sort of work with the outdoors in forest schools and I I suppose to some extent in secondaries what we've typically had a geography field trip or science field trips um then obviously PE when you're outdoors, but in terms of this outdoor learning, it seems to be absent a little more from the secondary sphere. So it's bringing that into your secondary world. And it's about giving, it's about having opportunity to do it and not forcing it yeah. and seeing how it grows and it will grow. I mean, you know, physically, but it would grow because once you start using it and you realize if, if it works, that you, you know, it's going to work, then, um, then you'll use it more, won't you? Yeah. Um, and you mentioned about pollution. And that's one of the reasons why we want to do this food for us well, because it will help with the CO2 uh, in and around the area. So. Yeah, you've, you've apparently got the highest pollution in England. Is that oh, right? I don't know. Dartford? Or I don't know whether it's across the whole of Dartford. It might just be that M25 corridor bit. I don't know. But it, it might it just be. Bad. Yeah. It's bad down here, but I don't, we don't notice. We don't notice it, those that are living in it. But but you softies that come in, maybe. You <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> And so in terms of like where you're heading as a cooperative trust, what are, what are your kind of main areas, main ambitions for the next year or so? Now we're maybe leaving some aspects of the pandemic behind, even if we don't know what the future is going to hold yet. It's to hold. I mean, you mentioned the pandemic. 
And whilst the pandemic has been horrendous for a lot of people, um, it has given many people, and us included, the chance to reflect on what's really important. Mm -hmm. uh, and for us, community, family, thinking of ourselves as family is really important. So for me, it's growing on that and not letting that be forgotten. Yeah. Um, and making sure that we continue to work in this really warm, we're all in this together, we can do it, let's help each other sort of way, as well as raising aspirations, um, as well as educating and empowering the kids. I mean, and getting a good offset, that would be good as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that kind of, you know, we've heard a lot of schools talking about their food banks, the provision they've had for their communities and all that kind of thing. What really has come out of the pandemic is how schools are these very powerful community assets if we use them in the right way and don't overuse them so they don't lose their focus on the quality of education and that stuff. But actually, if you get that right, the family feel, the community base, all of that stuff, it empowers you to be better for your, your girls or your kids. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And thank you very much. Any any questions for Anne? Um, some of you might, might have met Anne before, some of you haven't. Oh, Anne, no questions for you. It's all right. Yeah. Oh, ju just to throw something at Anne, we've met before anyway, and, and I hope to get involved more with you from, from the laser point of view, please, because I've got a lot to learn from you, I can see, obviously. And I, well, perhaps when times are better, I think they're coming, aren't they? According to Boris, uh, I can go up to Garth and <laughs> with my well, ambassador's hat on. Every, everything's everything's so, fine yeah. from uh, tomorrow, from isn't tomorrow, it? Yes, from yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all out hugging in the street, we're having street parties or something, or yeah. celebrating the Queen's recovery from COVID or whatever mm. it is this week. Yeah, no, I'd like to get up sometime now if that's okay with that with that hat on. I, I mean, we we'd be more than happy to to meet people. Yeah. And I, I, what I like about this forum and especially from the laser that I know you know originally John was we did back in the day and and it's changed again yeah. is getting to know other people that are local we've been to a local special yeah. school that we didn't really even know was a cooperative yeah. um I recently went over and saw Vic Goddard I know he gets mentioned quite a lot but what a lovely guy do you know what I mean he's just such a nice person um with lots to offer and and, and like everyone else I just want to if someone wants something I'll give it to you you don't want it it's fine you know you've got something to give to me I'll take it it's just that sort of open sharing of things that I think this has been amazing for yeah, yeah there's a lot there's a lot of expertise and support and other things that yes. we can learn from each other and use and, yeah. and part of our job as I see anyway is to bring all that together and we're trying to get into the stage as you know of starting to do that We've got a lot to go, but people like yourselves are trailblazers and that, and we can do a lot more of, of joining that up, I think. Thank you. I'd like to do that. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think one of the things that you do, Anne, is what you do so well at your school almost just feels like it's normal, but, but in many ways it isn't. It is because you do think about your uh, girls, their families, and your staff as one community you know, it truly cooperatively as one community. And you might not have been over the years using cooperative language or talking about cooperative principles, but it's clearly there, you know, in the version of, of the school that you lead as their head teacher principal. Thank you. you. Take, you really hard when someone says something nice. So I said something nice to someone today, and he went, "Oh no, no!" I said, "For God's sake, just take it. Yeah. You did a really well, good job. Just take it." That's, that's so, the lesson. That's the lesson for you as well, then. All right then. Thank you. <laughs> okay. And John, you got your hand up. Yeah. Hi. It's nice to see you, Anne. Um, I mean, weirdly, I've known I've known the school probably a bit longer than you have in, in oh, terms sure. of the history, and and I I think it's really I'm honestly fascinated because I remember working with. Um, Seamus Murphy, um, and and I think you know, fun enough, he's in my town these days in Folkestone. He's working down this way. Um, I, I think working with him, what happened at the beginning of the set up the trust, as you said, I think it was partly a reaction that was a bit defensive. There's some very odd, you know, sort of uh, relationships, if I can say so, with you know, the, the network of schools around Dartford is is wow, mm. complicated. And it's highly competitive, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what was going on then was over influenced even more than now by you know, this thing, oh, structure, it's all about structure. And I think you're right that, you know, I think the initial impetus focused more on 
I mean, it's amazingly detailed stuff like you sit on top of or underneath a primary school, you know, at, at these weird things about, oh, how do we resolve that when we get to land and asset transfer? That's not what education's about. Um, there were good signs. And I think the guy you mentioned who is still with you by the Senate from STEM was really interesting. And that link, quite important for, you know, the, the original specialism of the school. But what I, what I feel has come through is something more relaxed and really positive. Not, not you know, lacking, not lazy relaxed, but actually very accepting that if you get practical, you do stuff with the community. So, you know, the idea of forest school or the development of, um, yeah, community involvement in a piece of land, um, all of that suddenly, I, I think it's it's a great release. And, and I'm just really interested to hear, especially because that argument surfaced over the last couple of days, you know, all oh, our academies back again, just close the door is my answer to that every time and say, you're working for girls and young women developing their identity. Uh, you're opening up the world, their opportunities and the dividend, here's the core, you know, lovely word, the dividend, it comes out quite naturally in terms of quality. And I'm sure, and I absolutely take Lee's word for it that it's, it's become a better school, yeah, as it goes along because that's real education. You know, if you worry constantly about data, you, you, if it's a desktop exercise, that's not education. If it's in the classroom, if it's working out into the community, it is. So I, I really applaud you. And it's, it's great to hear you. I think you're very self-effacing. You under, because you do it naturally, I think you're understating um, what Vic Goddard always says in his office. He's got, don't forget you make the weather. Yeah, you know, it's, 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 it's tongue in cheek about how powerful you are, but you know, Vic's mantra is if you go out with a smile, you're relaxed. Does it matter if people go home at three o'clock because they've got yeah. something to do? No. If they're coming in the right frame of mind, just like the kids, if they don't come in with the capacity to learn in the right frame of mind, it's it's a it's a lost day. So, you know, all, all credit to you. Um, really John, and I'm very impressed that you remember about the school because we have got a primary school yeah. on the first two floors of part of the building and we're on the third and fourth floor and that that is quite complicated. It's weird. <laughs> yeah, it's weird as well, yeah. yeah. But no, I mean, seriously, I'd, I'd hat off to you if I had one on. Um, and I suppose if there's a question in it, um, I, I, I guess I was always curious about whether there's any resolution because, you know, I've, I've referred gently to what at the time seemed like quite fractious com competition between groups of schools. And I'm thinking, these are all Dartford people. You know, and the amount of cooperation between schools was very, you know, I, I just felt it was very sad. It was hostile. It was hostile. I think you used that word, or yeah. you used the word fractious, but it was yeah. hostile. It and really was. having worked for one of the hostile uh, trusts, and I don't mean that, you know, they, they are no. a trust and I would say nothing bad about them, but they weren't for me. I, you know, I didn't fit uh, in the end, even though I helped create the beginning of it. Um, but we still work as head teachers, regardless of what the CEOs and what the and what the political side of it. The right. head teachers have their own little. We have our own little Dartford head teachers sort of um, WhatsApp type group, and we also all meet to swap students who want to move or are having a bad time. And we pra so we do help each other out despite all of that now. Um, and I think that that's healthy. I think that's really healthy because at the end of the day, they're all our kids. All on our I think path. that's really good. And, and the yeah. other slight question was also, I think the Dartford economy is really weird. You've got some of the biggest distribution centres in the country, right? Um, and you've got some very high tech uh, industry as well, sort of science labs and so on. Um, are, are you sort of still managing to work on, you know, relationships with employers, but also industries or, or employment you know, sectors it's an interesting point you make the the biggest issue we have is that we don't have the resources that some of those other uh, academy trusts have right. to get in and alongside uh, the industries so we're a bit late to that party 
Um, I have tried, but I haven't got as far as I would like. So it's an area for development, which is one of the reasons why the trust board being so small was an issue because we couldn't use them to help because I see that as part of what sure. the trust can do, just opening a few doors and, and networking and helping us get into different places or helping us think about how to get into other places um, that we haven't thus been able to do. So um, that, that's interesting to know and i think one last it's like memo to self you know during the course of yesterday we had a few you know quite helpful bits of reflection on what the national board or regional groups can do in the co-op family of schools i i think we really must get a bit more assertive with the other co-op sectors because I mean, there's a big presence in the southeast and um, co-op southeast and southern co-op groups have actually mm. gradually come towards us a bit with small help on projects like um, you know catering and hospitality sector learning and provision and I think you know maybe, maybe that's something else we need to put out certainly in laser and I think in other regions let's get the co-op to be cooperative oh <laughs> well, what a wonderful way to end a conference that sounds like a, an ending yeah. doesn't it really yeah. yeah and thank you ever so much uh, I think one of the things you know you said you didn't fit into an academy trust and I guess one of the things that sometimes comes across in certain academy trusts, I wouldn't say any of the members with us that are cooperative, is it is that homogenization. Everyone looks and behaves a certain way. And I think one of the delights I've had in getting to know you and your school, and I mean this as a compliment, is your individualism and your idiosyncrasies. You know, you are authentically yourself, you know, and uh, that comes across in your schools, in your school. Well, thank you. Thanks very much. Now, um, last, I'm having a stretch there because I've got a bit of a stiff neck, um, just in case you're wondering what I was doing as I was wiggling around. I did, I did say in Ben Stevenson's thing that I'm a fidget, which is why I often stand up rather than sit down. Um, we were going to be transitioning, Alan, weren't we, to a discussion around governance? But yes, it would be a nice thing to do. Yeah, I'm but I, I know how difficult it's been. So I think, I think what we might... Yeah. I'd, I'd, I mean, you can raise a few issues and talk about governance. Um, well, I'd like to do that anyway. I've got Roberta here, of course, which is wonderful. Everybody else is picking up kids or doing something or gone somewhere or doing what they, whatever they do. I'm not quite sure what, but we've had a, yeah, quite a number of apologies. Um, but we, I'd still like to have, if it's okay, around yeah, go the symbol yeah. well, You are Fortunately, um, you are in the centre of my yeah. screen, a la la, the Brady Bunch. Oh, yeah. um, okay. So you can carry on talking. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, I don't want to talk, well, I kind of don't want to talk a lot, I just want to leave things, yeah. Uh, Anne's gone anyway, but she, she was in the government. So we've got Roberta here, who knows me of old, and we, we, it's a bit like we're, we're part of what used to be the uh, the three musketeers, really, or something, wasn't it? Um, yeah. Because there would be, there'd be Alison White, who was my co-chair at Case Center, who sadly had to step down for all sorts of reasons, leaving me um, sitting in the chair with, with Roberta having moved up to sort of vice chair and doing all the training and development stuff. So she's got a pretty good picture across what's going on, especially.